get this hub off and get this sorted. It's a major blow to Steve's return to the road. There I was worried about rain, now I've got to worry about mechanical problems. I just don't believe this sometimes. Bella and Steve have a big journey lined up. They need to cart over 100 tonnes of cement and construction materials to Central Australia. We've got to get this load to Alice Springs, urgently. Unseasonal rain has turned Steve's normal route to mush, forcing him to take a much longer detour. The only option is to go across the bottom or right around the top. And across the bottom is the cheapest option for my customers. And it's the least, least rained on option. Well, girl, we'll go then. You want to get going? We'll go. I believe that I am driving into a thunderstorm here. And I think we've got a good chance of getting wet very shortly. Now that's rain, boy. That's heavy rain. It's these storms, they, the onset's really sudden. It's immediate. You know, you're driving along, you just hit a wall of water and wind. As the rain backs off, another hazard puts Steve on high alert. Water on the side of the road is drawing dozens of thirsty kangaroos. Don't run back, you idiot. holding off. But further ahead, the road is showing the scars from another downpour. Oh, look at this. There's been a lot of water on this road. The skies are clearing. But on the road, all the signs of recent rain. Now, this river looks like it could have issues. So I need to get myself right down in a low gear. And I will engage my cross locks. Cross locks give equal power to all four drive tyres at the same time. Essential in conditions like these. I'm wary of that big, it looks like a big deep hole over the other side. It proves no match for Steve and his truck. But the next bog hole is much deeper. Starting to go off the edge back there. Come on, truck, come on. Got a massive pile up of dirt back there under my. This is a big ask of these trucks every time. My big worry is when that drops down in the hole that it doesn't fall over. That's a big, big hole there. Bugger it. I'm going to have to get the shovel out. Stuck. 100 tonnes of road train. 100 kilometres from help. with one trailer dangerously unbalanced, he needs to work fast. That is starting to be a bit of a scary angle. That's my concern, that this trailer doesn't fall in there and fall over. Luckily, he's got an escape plan. I'll let a bit more air out of these tyres. I'll drop my tyres on 50 pound, I'll drop my tyres down to 40. Let it build up plenty of air, release all the brakes. And give it a little go. Deflating the tyres puts more tread in contact with the ground, increasing traction. If get the second one up straight enough, I could unhook it. Take two. I'm 
I'm going to rip the clutch out of this truck if I keep doing what I'm trying to do. All of what that, that engine's giving is going into the ground. Something will break. Back trailers are stuck. They're just dead weight, stuck in the wet sand. With no way to call for help, getting out of here will come down to one man and his know-how. I've got to ease the load on. So I'll drop this back trailer. That's uh, nearly 40 tonne. I'm not trying to pull through the water if I can get it unhooked. Pulling the trailers free one by one will take longer, but put less of a strain on the truck. Now Steve can adjust his line of attack. I'm going to try and pick this trailer up on a different angle in new wheel tracks. But he's doing more harm than good. This trailer is sliding down, down, down into this hole. Time for a helping hand. He's usually locked in his dark little cave in here. Serious, bad chain. It's my last little, little go. Steve's last hope. Five metres of heavy duty steel. The advantage with the chain is you can pull up some drive and take up the weight and just give it a bit of a yank forward. You might see a smile when the next one comes out. Just the tipper to go. It'd be fair to say that last trailer was difficult. This one's dangerous. Hit the steep sides of the bog hole, and this rescue attempt could be all over. I've seen tippers fall over in mud holes like this. This one's scary. There's one other option. I'm trying to pull it straight in the hole. I've got to pull it in the hole so it stays level. Rather than go around the water, go straight into it. Here we go. hours freedom when you get out of a mess like that all by yourself it's you know it's not without a sense of satisfaction I'm gonna get on with it put this whole thing back together again and go deliver some freight just pull it back and just yeah, it thanks mate uh -huh. that's it thanks yeah. cover That is so nice, really, to see that thing come off there. Well, that's it. Home sweet home. And after a marathon first run, Bella has earned her stripes. There you go. There you go. Job's done. You're learning. You're slowly becoming a truck dog. In Perth, legendary trucker Steve Graham has a delicate and difficult cargo. As you can see, it's an awkward, ugly looking thing. The new water tank and its components are headed to a remote oh. Aboriginal settlement. This is a dry country, Australia, and it's in the middle of a dreadful drought. This is to give these little communities more water as we go into the future. At this time of year, the Kimberley region is one of the hottest parts of Australia, with temperatures climbing into the mid 40s. It's the build-up to the wet season, which brings increasingly dangerous weather. We've got to keep our eye out for whatever the outback might dish out. And it's got a few good tricks it can deliver. It's got thunderstorms, bushfires, it's got wildlife on the road. Who said this was going to be holiday? 
Steve's road etiquette is soon put to the test. A pair of eight metre wide mining dumpsters are collecting traffic. The oversized convoy is following closely behind the pilot vehicle, giving Steve little time to pull over safely. Yeah, I got it, mate. I got it. Close. Forcing Steve off the road. Oh, shit. Have a good night, mate. No worries, fellas. It was all a bit sudden there, but we'll be right. Yeah, normally the front pilot's a bit further out, and you've got a couple of kilometres at least to get a decent spot to get off. Anyway, no choice in the end, there's a couple of white posters down. But as temperatures soar past 40 degrees, his engine struggles in the desert conditions. The front dip's up to 100 degrees now, and the gearbox is up to 90-odd. I'll just probably start backing off a little bit, but um, I can't lose sight of the fact that I have to be there to deliver Friday morning at the latest. Carrying a full load of water tank components, it's the last 20 kilometres of the journey that puts his cargo at most risk. This road might be a case of it's the end of the year and it's been a fair while since it's been graded and you just get what you get. The lower tyre pressure increases traction on the rough surface of the road. My tyres are showing a deflating light, but there's no deflation going on. strange yet it was working last night all right i'm just going to shut the engine off and without the compressor going on and put those tires on deflate and see if that works then it actually feels like this controller here is a bit buggered just a bit of heat in there and it was a bit of wriggling the leads my mother taught me that repair. Whack, whack. After two hours on the dirt, Steve reaches his destination. Good truck. Always does a good job, this truck. On schedule, with his load in perfect condition. Tell me when to stop, mate. Eh? Beautiful. Righto. The boys are going to unload me, which is bloody good news. But there's a problem with Steve's second trailer. Looks like we might need another sling. Missing is a sling needed to stabilise the tank lid while unloading. It's probably still sitting on the forklift out in Pioneer's yard. I've got straps here you can use. I mean, the straps are rated for 2,400 kilos. Right, let's do that. And what we can do is put a ratchet on the end, which is, right, you know, yeah. where you want to join it. The yep. team opt for some outback innovation. And then we ratchet that to its mate. Yeah, because the two back ones stabilise it. I think you'd be right. Once it's off the trailer, it's out of my hands. It's another job done, and another job done is always good. In Perth, Western Australia, veteran trucker Steve Graham is racing to assemble his road train before nightfall. We're going to hook onto this trailer now, that's part of the load, the steel, the structural steel that we're taking across. But things don't look promising for the road ahead. Yeah, they're still forecasting rain for the western desert areas. And I can see cloud build up up there already. My biggest worry is that central road is so good at the moment that the shires are going to be desperate to protect it and they'll, they'll close it. They'll close it at the first drop of rain. Because they've spent so much money and time and machinery on that road this year. And if they shut the road, then it becomes a huge issue. I'll be bugging. After 500 kilometres, Steve pulls over for a routine inspection of his load. I can smell diff oil. Ah, oh, fuck me. I absolutely don't believe it. I can smell diff oil, I can see diff oil, I've got a wheel seal gone. 
There's a line of oil spraying up on the mud, bottom of the mud guard there. A wheel seal gone on this brand new diff. Blowing a seal on a drive wheel is a serious problem. We're going to have to get to Mount Magnet, get a mechanic, get this hub off and get this sorted. It's a major blow to Steve's return to the road. They were always worried about rain, now I've got to worry about mechanical problems. I just don't believe this sometimes. He's racing 200 kilometres to the nearest town. Right, mate, it's all brand new, as I said. I've had a huge amount of trouble with the bearings, mate, a huge amount. The initial inspection doesn't look good. That's failed. Something's failed under there. Yep, she's fucked. We've got to get in there and see what the damage is. I've already rung the biggest customer, MRN. They need the freight. So once again, the pressure's down the end of that telephone. How long will it hold you up, Steve? As soon as there's an issue on the road, it goes back to how long will this keep you? The good news is I'm not seeing a lot of shiny metal in there. That's the good news. It could be a nightmare of a nightmare and huge money, but at this point in time, fingers crossed, I'm just looking down the barrel of a, either a loose or a replacement bearing. Replacing a seal should be a simple fix. But we can't fix it without parts, so now we're looking for parts. Fingers crossed he's got one. Tight. He's out of luck. Sevio hasn't got a seal on him that fits this truck. Steve could be stuck for a day waiting for a new part. He's going to go for a drive around town to see some of his mates and just see if we can jag one in town here this afternoon. If we can, it gets me rolling in the next couple of hours or so. The weather's picking up. That rain that we thought was around is definitely around. I just hope this is not happening out in the desert. Bad news is, I've got customers complaining in Alice Springs already. I've rung them earlier and said I'm a day late. It's as simple as that. That you'll crawl over broken glass to get the job done. Everything depends on you. Good to go. Finally, he can get rolling. No worries at all, mate. Much appreciated, Copper. I'm, gl I'm glad you're here. Thanks, Fred, mate. Short night's rest, Steve's looking to make up time. As he heads into the desert, his worries about rain are evaporating. I think it's about 40 degrees out there. Replaced with concerns about the heat. My gearbox is running up at over 100 degrees Celsius, so I've just dropped it back a bit to 85, 90. Ahead. The tarmac will give way to the dust and grinding dirt of the Great Central Road. One last chance to fill up before the long haul. I'm getting every last drop in to get me across the desert. $2,000 worth of diesel should do the trick. I've got about 1,800 kilometres to go to Alice Springs. 1,200 kilometres of hard dirt. It'd be nice to be sitting around a campfire tonight with a cold beer and a decent feed and not have to enjoy my evening with a mechanic fixing something on my truck. Well, here we are. That's another one in. Thank goodness for that. After getting it here in one piece, the pressure's on to unload quickly. That's why the, the pressure's on. They've been out of work in this. They've run out of jobs. So that'll keep some of the men going in the morning, unloading by hand the stuff out of that container. 1,500 hard kilometres stand between Steve and Darwin. And overhead, an old enemy, the weather. 
The severe thunderstorm advice for up here, areas up here, at damaging winds. This truck was written off a few years ago nearly by a thunderstorm. The, the, uh, the hail was like shaven 20 cent pieces. It was coming in, smashed every bit of glass down the left hand side, blew half my load off on the road. So I get, yeah, yeah I to pay attention when it says with damaging winds, I get ready. about this business, it's a business of extremes, and that wind is awfully strong. You copy there, southbound? Yeah, mate, I've only just got into it. Does it go far up there behind you? Oh, man, yeah. Bring it a trip. Okay, mate, no worries. So we'll make the best of it. Well, it looks like it's round two coming up. I just had a little bit of spell from the weather just said It was a nice, easy bit, but looks like some serious stuff coming up again. In the heart of the country, Steve Graham's fighting wave after wave of monsoonal downpours. It's all around. It's nice and messy. That's that storm. I think we've got to the west and the north of it. It gave us round two, but we got through it all right. It's been eight days and 4,000 k's but he's now closing in on his destination. Only a bit over an hour out of Darwin. After four months off the road, it's another job well done for this outback legend. It's been one of those trips that once I got out in the desert and settled down, it was good. The jump up that can catch me didn't catch me. The corrugations that could bash me didn't bash me too badly. Highway. 